you will let me know. Showing up, I left. Day after, he called me. He said, Are you sure that I'm willing to do it? Two days after he moved in, I had to like bring up on the streets. I had to like bring back to, to, back to New York. I came down on the 11th of December, and I had to be till the 20th of December. One week prior to that, I was told that he is sick, and he told me at the hospital, etc. I said, don't worry, I'm coming up. I came down the 11th, and I would be at the hospital visiting him. But December 16th, I was, it was a Friday, I was unable to go and visit him. When the sister came up, she told me that Macri was asking for you. I said, oh my God. Saturday the 17th, by 5.30 a.m., I was at the hospital ready. I said, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock visitation, I will be there. I came in, he was still sleeping. I saw he had some stain by his mouth. I wiped, set up for him, and I left. Approximately 3.30 to 4 o'clock, I received a message that the doctor is saying that he took a turn for the worse. The family member has to come. They say, oh my God. We drove down to the hospital and part of the family was already there. We stood by his bed and we saw everything on the right hand right in front of our other guy. He came up the post, so to speak. And we were there, quite peacefully, no choking and shaking, just like this. I said, oh my God. And you know as a holy man, but it will break your heart to see a loved one depart. Of course, there was crying. But not then, the only time that I know him, I've been a true brother. And I was hoping to know him even better when I came down December 11th to the 20th, when he was at the hospital. But if there is something, I'm so glad that I was there to witness everything that happened right there and then. Because if I was in New York to receive that news that he passed, I don't know how I would receive it. But God in his infinite wisdom, he foresaw what would happen. He had already predestined by the 11th of December to the 20th. I had to be in St. Lucia because this is what God prepares. I'm saying this to say that. Our brother Job said something which is so true. He said, man and born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. And I want to want to be like grass. All of us are strangers, pilgrims, passing through this life. And I want to challenge you by letting you know you have to be in the casket one day. What will your answer be? All of us have to go. Because the scripture says it is appropriate to me once to die, but after this is the judgment. I'm not pretty a sermon. I'm just telling you what my brother is talking there. I miss my brother very much. As I said, I was hoping to know him better, but it wasn't permitted. So I want to say to brother, cousin, nothing, may you rest in peace. May you both have a favorite. May God have a
and he was really positive. Up to the Wednesday, came on, came on Tuesday, I kept on asking the Lord, give me that opportunity to meet back in in person and grant them. And the Wednesday I was in back in, and he told us, I have to spend Christmas with my family. Sister that he has to spend Christmas in this morning. This is what Christmas is a very good spot. Not only at the food run, we hear of the good deeds of the deceased. But today I speak of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Many times we learn the greatest lessons from the bad and the ugly. The Holy Book of Bible records the great acts of the mighty men of God. But it too didn't shy away from mentioning their big faults. And for this reason, God allowed it that we may learn from their failures. Market was a man was always ready and willing to do anything for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Attest to that. We don't find many young men right now that kind of passion that Mark and I. He served the house of God faithfully. I want to elaborate on that. I will not have a change to you. Working in Mark and was a joy. And I just mentioned one of these occasions. I remember when Daniel Ringer was called a dog. And the Lord chose five unqualified persons with no name, no title. You were one of them. Mackin, Cheryl Miller, Daisy, and myself. And the Lord said, go to that ghetto in the name of day. Go and pray for them in the midst of the God. He said, don't preach. Just pray for them. Market was not preacher, he was not teacher. But you see, any little skill that Market has, we use it for the Lord. And at that time, we couldn't ask the, the ghetto people for the electricity. Because I was like, oh. But Market would operate the generator. And let me tell you, we didn't have to pull a wire. Market got it all together. And we're just standing there. What market did? I was a man. And when we are done praying, just give market back the mic and get everything together. That was the market. I can move. Take them out 
socialize with them. Make them feel important. Make them feel a sense of being, give them a sense of belonging. Call them on the phone. Even if they don't answer the call, sometimes they see the phone, you know, they're going through. And they're not answering the call. Text a message. And then when you have not seen them for a few days, make it your business, friend them at home. Just be there for them. As you see, people, it is easy to become suicidal. Very, very easy. There's like a big problem to become suicidal. I've been there. I can tell you. Anyone can become suicidal. Even as a Christian, I've been there. But God is always there to see us. It was hard. And painful. When you're lying on a hospital bed for 16 days plus, I think I injured as a 21 days last year. And for someone to call you on a phone, you're lying on a hospital bed. And someone to call and say, and say, Market, you're dying, good luck. Yes. Market experience that. You're dying, good guy. You said that to me. I said, Pack, you're lying. That can't happen. That's not true. And then give me evidence. How do you know? Who's that person? And I, I dig him out. And he gave me all the evidence. The number, the name, the everything. I said, the person that I identified themselves. That's something yes, it's a large one. Back in your diet, go back in your diet. In case you didn't know, back in your diet, you forgive us. To a different side. You forgive them. In spite of what you're going through. Shabila spoke to me. I mean, after Mackin has been speaking to me for a while. But Shamila spoke to me after his death and said, This is a master. Mark is to his best friend. Please tell my sister, Shamila, to tell my people, please forgive my respect. That was such a blessing to me. And his dying breath to make such a statement. He didn't die in bitterness. He died. Forgiveness. So today, the family, in spite of what you're doing, let forgiveness reign. In conclusion, I say goodbye, my dear friend. Goodbye, my son. See you in the next life. Be comforted in the arms of your Savior and King and the angels at your attention. I salute you, Jacob. Good afternoon, everybody. My tribute is on behalf of Daddy and Major of the Colors Seven. We are deeply saddened by the death of our beloved Markel, affectionately known as Marco by our pastor. Markel came to the church as a very young man who loved the Lord. He became an active member in the youth ministry. He continued to make spiritual progress in that. He wanted to know more about God when he attended the Sydney School of Theology. On the completion of the course, he was given the opportunity to minister the way in the church. We can never forget his favorite message about a man who caught a bird and had it in his hand. The person would ask whether the bird was alive or whether the bird was dead. No one had an answer except the man with the bird in his hand. If someone would say that the bird was alive, he had the power to kill it. Likewise, if someone would say that the bird was dead, 
we have the power to set it free. The moral of the story was that God has our lives in his hand. He chooses to keep us alive or to allow death to come our way. Today, we truly realize that God is the giver of life. According to Job, God either and God take it me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We will never forget the moments that you mark in, you preach, with your big rag on your shoulder, smiles all the way. And at the end of each line, you would stop and say, let me tell you, church, we had a long pause and we had to wait. So, you served in many ministries. He made invaluable contributions in the ministry he served. He served as the president for of the men's president for a long time. His dedication to this department was commendable, even when the men didn't show up. Matthew would be the only one to come to meet him. He took great pride in operating the music system, both in the church and at Prusy. Sometimes he would be on the battlefield to set up straight coming from work. God can never forget his labor of love, as stated in Hebrews chapter 10, chapter 6, verse 10. He also loved to be an orator. Martin used to take much more time than was allotted to him because he always had a few jokes to tell or a story to preach. Lately, Martin used to lead his own worship session during preaching. His favorite songs among them were, I am no longer a slave to sleep here, and other as you just heard the lady dance to. I belong to you. Oh yes, Martin did not fail me, for he has crossed this bridge and he has met his other father. One of his favorite scriptures was Psalms chapter 119, verses 136. The entrance of thy word is light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. He was a man of prayer. One of his desires was to see men really worship God. He wanted to see a man's worship team. Martin had a big heart. No wonder he was living in Mark. He was full of kindness and love. He had a special relationship with the pastor, and he always had a gift for her. He especially loved bringing the chocolates. He was someone people loved to be around. He was a beautiful soul inside and out. We will miss Martin's warm smile. It still sounds like a dream that Martin is gone. We knew he was sick, but we never thought that he would have gone so soon. Martin smiled and said he was all right until he could not say anything again. It is devastating to realize that all we have of him now are memories. We will miss him dearly, but we know that he is in a better place. He was, he was needed more in heaven. And so today, we see the lady get family cry, mourn, but do not be in despair. If you prepare yourself as Martin did, you will surely see him.
Marvin's journey into Christianity was ushered in by his brother, his dear brother, Edmund. As young persons, we all may have contemplated taking a wrong turn. However, God had other plans to save this young man. This young man at a very tender age, as you would have heard just a while ago, that he did the church seriously and actually did some studies in theology. After such, he deviated, he, he never deviated, deviated from the teachings of the Bible and had full, the full dedication to Jesus Christ. He definitely stood on the word of God and gospel music was his favorite. Just a little lucky to be here and there, right? To kind of spice things up for him. His older siblings, Earl and Edmund, made many sacrifices to help push him forward. They provided encouragement to him, no matter the situation. Mark and love to play around with his siblings, even up to his, if, even until his deathbed. His joke was, push my foot to see how strong you are, and I definitely can push back. Right? Even on the deathbed, Mark and did have a lot of strength. He always proved to them that he was a strong person, no matter what came his way. His jovial ways were very infectious in the family, as there would never be a dull moment around Macken. His jokes are definitely memorable, especially by his friends and siblings. He loved a good scented perfume. Yeah, that's a real man. A man of high standards. He definitely had high integrity. He was not easily broken or persuaded to do anything that would appear illegal or anything that would be against the will of God. Let us not forget that Big Mac loved his dumplings and turkey. Yes, he loved the good one pot. Whether it was the one pot or separately. And his mom would definitely know what he wanted and at what time he wanted it. And she would be the one to prepare the chef in his kitchen. Shamila was his human diary, and she would keep his records, keep records of his every move, and also personal documents as well. Shamila definitely reminded him every day of what he had to do, what he did not have to do. Shamila was definitely a source of strength for him as well. His mother was his biggest source of encouragement. She encouraged him as always and expressed love to him. He also expressed his love in return. He had a special way to touch his mom. He would touch her under her chin to ensure that she was doing fine and ask her, are you doing okay? Right? You know him in his hip points. He also did the same gesture to our grandmother. She's not here, but Annika in the top of holy. Martin's father, a very quiet man, loved his son, Zian. In short, that he always looked out for him. There is definitely evidence of that in today. Marken was also a handyman, jack of all trades, but master of none. <laughs> definitely, he pushed himself to do all that he can do. His virtuous friend, well, a very close friend, Koji, would take him on projects where he learned the electrical train quite well. I can vividly remember that they were the ones who worked on the arts of Pentecostal church to ensure that there was electricity at the church. With his kind heart, he gave many gifts, especially to his beloved aunt, Violet. Norita and also the other aunts were loved by him as he showed much respect and love to them. Norita's bread was his favorite, despite having two brothers who worked in a bakery. <laughs> no one would ever know if he was in pain, as his demeanor was quite consistent. He never showed any sign of pain, any sign of grief, never did he. He had multiple nephews, multiple, multiple nephews. However, he had a special bond with Cornel who is Edmund's son. Mikael used to call him Mado, which is another name, but he is known by in the family. 
in the recent World Cup, would you believe Marken actually supported the team? This is actually my favorite team as well in the World Cup. Argentina, who won the World Cup. However, on the day before that very final, he actually never made it. He passed on and he did not even see the team celebrate the trophy. He would be glued to his television all the time, whenever there was wrestling. Whenever wrestling was being held, he would sit there with his popcorn, he would sit there, have, you know, get, get some water, get something so that he would be able to sit and enjoy it. He definitely was a lover of animals as well. He ensured that the dogs and the cats in the area were well fed. Marken was a man that left his mark everywhere he touched or went. One would definitely remember his kind-hearted soul. We are here today, however, let us have a great memory of him. His presence will forever be etched in our hearts and our minds. Welcome, Apostle Lester James, as he shares the word. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's very hard for me this afternoon to bring up that word. I must say because uh, of the relationship Martin and myself have. Martin, I consider Martin to be one of my sons in the Lord, a man who was very close to me. I think I call Martin sometimes three or four times for the day. I'll call him in the morning around 7 or 8, 30, 7 or 8, somewhere there, and he'll say either he's on the bus or either he just reached him um, and his work, and I'll have to call him back later. And even around 12 or 1 o'clock, I'll say I'll call him again so that we can talk. And sometimes by 3 or 4 o'clock, I'll call him and say either he's on the bus, and as soon as he reach home, he'll give me a call. So Martin was a man, I must say, with a tender heart, although he was big, but Martin was a big teddy bear. And the, big, the good thing about life is that we all have to live one way or another. And even in leaving, it comes with disappointment. Even with leaving, it comes with pain. Even with leaving, it comes with hurt. And with leaving, it comes with things that you never planned for or you never expected. And oftentimes when we experience pain, we express ourselves in a way that we did not expect or anticipate or otherwise. And sometimes people have questions about us when we go through pain. But I've come to ask you a question this morning before I go into the scripture. I never say I've experienced pain. Lift up your hand and miss you this afternoon. I never say I've experienced the loss of a loved one. Well, last year I lost my dad, and three months or two months after that, I lost my grandmother. And it was very painful. So sometimes it's easy when you are not going through pain to talk bad about somebody who's going through pain. But when you are going through pain, you can never tell how you will express yourself. And for this reason, we need to also understand that people can actively but because they are going through grief and because they are going through pain. And I believe even this afternoon we are here because of the family that have come together to bury the loved one. And that comes with pain. It is very painful to see that the one you love, the one that, that you are grown with, the one that, that you are being relationship and affection towards, that at one point in time that person died and you will not talk to that person. Anymore. It's very painful, but I come to give you hope this afternoon that in spite of how painful your situation may be, that God is a God who comforts the broken. Come on, somebody put your hands together for God. God is a God who comforts those who are going through painful moments. And sometimes in your moment of pain, the people you fought that will stand with you are the people sometimes who say more things. Somebody put your hand together for God this afternoon. 
I want to speak to you today on heaven's gates. Let's send our Bible to the book of Luke. Let's send our Bible to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 16. I don't want, I have not come to preach to Mark and Master push it by Mark and Jordia because Mark and Mark. And Mark and Pakasatan, Samuel Kusadi, Mark and have received enough of preaching. So Mark and Ayers are not open this afternoon to hear any preaching. I come to preach to the living and not the dead. I want to speak to you this afternoon very brief. Let's see our Bible to Luke chapter 16 and verses 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. And at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dog came and licked his sores. Verse 23. The time came when the beggar died. An angel carried him to Abraham's side, or Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. But I want to stop there for a while. What we see here is this, that both the rich died, and both the poor died, and both those who are living in luxury, they die as well. So it means that it's very common to every man. It means regardless of what life you live on this earth, or the way you are required, there comes a time where you will die. So there is no shame in death. For some people, when people die, they believe as if it is shameful. For some people, when they hear of the death of somebody, they begin to rejoice because in their mind, they think that they will not die. When I come to tell you, regardless of how wealthy you are, you will die one day. Regardless of how poor you are, you will die one day. But there is a death that the Bible speaks about that is different from every other death. And that is the death of the child of God. Oh my God, therefore a Christian is not the end of life. Therefore a Christian is the gate to heaven's rest. In other words, if you are truly a believer, you will understand that when you die, it is not the end of your life. And this rich man understood this. When he died, the Bible said he was placed in Hades. But when Lazarus died, angel came and take him home. Glory to the God. Or somebody put your hand together for God this afternoon. It is a good place to do so. Because the Bible speaks of death that will come upon every man. Whether you want to knock your man here, death will knock at your door. Whether you are a teacher, death will knock at your door. Whether you are a preacher, a pastor, or a person, death will knock at your door. But it is not how you, but it is not death you should fear. It is how you die you should fear. And the Bible shows us that angel came and carried this man into Abraham's bosom. In other words, there is something about a Christian that is so precious to God that when you die, in as much as men will carry your body and press it in a tomb, but the angel of the Lord came. Oh my God, when you die, to take you home. I come to tell you, Makin is not in that grave. Makin is not in that home. But Martin has already been taken home. But what we are seeing here today is Martin's body. So Martin live a life that brings glory and honor to God. And the thing about being a Christian, which most people don't understand, is that being a Christian don't make you put it. I don't like preaching up front words. But listen and listen to me well. Being a Christian will make you perfect. And for this reason, oftentimes, you may see that even the Christians sometimes, they fall sometimes. They make mistakes sometimes. But the fact that you fall as a Christian doesn't mean that God rejects you. Because God has a way of forgiving you regardless of the sin that you have committed.
Parce qu'on n'a pas à servir la vie. On n'a pas à servir encore. Il vient faire cabane, après ça il a dormi, il faut se dormir, 
Parce que ma tête c'est un Dieu. Ma tête pas de porter, mais c'est un Dieu. Amen, Alléluia. Amen, Alléluia. Mais qui a vu au Kaïfi de l'Opité ici là A son Kaïfi comme l'homme ça là Qui va te dire qu'il y a un qui va te faire Qui va te faire Qui va te faire Qui va te faire La porte nous va te faire La porte nous va te faire Le porte nous va te faire Le porte nous va te faire A son Kaïfi comme l'homme ça là Qui est l'argent pour assister à Kaïfi Qui m'a dit ta vie et puis c'est le fouet Qui m'a dit ta vie et puis mon nom parle de et puis Qui m'a dit ta vie C'est pas le cas de ta vie. Et mon Dieu, mon Dieu, parce que mon Dieu est plus de mon nom. Qui m'a dit mon Dieu, mon Dieu, mon Dieu, mon Dieu, mon Dieu. C'est pas tout le monde qui a dit mon Dieu, mon Dieu, qui a un ciel. Parce que mon Dieu a dit mon Dieu, mon Dieu, mon Dieu, mon Dieu, c'est pour ça que vous n'avez pas un ciel. Parce qu'il n'y a pas de vie, mon Dieu, mais il n'y a pas de pièce de relation et puis il va se faire. Et puis, chaleur, et puis, foyer. Quand il y a des gens qui ont fait geste comme en église, il n'y a pas de pièce de relation avec les gens. Pour ça, nous sommes là aussi. Oui, oui. Ça, nous sommes là aussi. Moi, je ne vais pas y aller pour Nous, on va pas aller aussi. Abraham, il va se faire une prise. Son, remember! C'est pas ça qui est le problème. Le problème, c'est la manière de la vie et de la vie. Vous n'avez pas de gens sur une richesse. Vous n'avez pas de gens sur une belle caille. Vous n'avez pas de gens sur une belle machine. Vous n'avez pas de gens sur une belle riche et de la vie. Vous n'avez pas de gens sur une belle vie. Yeah, it's 
says. And Salomon, who looks at great, says, who will sort the battle? And did he attack her? And did he give her the battle? 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 C'est là qu'on te montre qu'il va servir Dieu qui va aller. Et la vie, ça va se faire la vie qui va aller. Mais là, il y a l'autre la vie qui va aller. Alors, c'est bien. Et tant que ça, tant que ça, moi, je vais te montrer à vous, tant que ça, tant que ça, qui continue à faire ça, tant que 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 Verse 29, Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. What do you mean? Abraham did not have any here. Let me ask a prophet, Kavi. 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 The leaders from the church in Denver, they attend your priest around the family, stand behind. And Pastor, Pastor Dennis as well, Pastor, um, yes. We're not praying for the, for the dead body, we pray for the family who are alive and living. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, the word of God requires, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In other words, Sarah Bimka Nikolawe, and let us not be lost, but Sarah, we took care of a fashion of sukwas. We took care of a fashion of sukwas. Many did not hear a lot of glory. A glory, I look kind to appear. 
il passe à compter. Et puis, sous force, là, nous allons aller à présent. Moi, ça va tenir un grand monde qui te plaît, ma belle vie, mais ma belle télévision, sous force. Et après, je ne vais pas souffrir encore. Après, je ne vais pas côté, côté qui a reste, après, je vais enjoy, reste, rien ne va dire. Et puis, nous, ça va se sentir, je vais nous chat. Mais, ça va vraiment dire, nous, plus nous vivons sur la terre, ça va, c'est plus nous qui avons sous force. Et Dieu, elle va nous forcer cette croix. This afternoon, I want to pray for the family. Father God, I thank you for the Smith family, for the Dennis family. Father God, this day, I know they have lost a dear friend. I know they have lost, oh God, a son. I know they have lost a brother. I know they have lost a cousin, a relative. Father God, today we pray that you feel the boy with your comfort, with your love, with your mercy, with your compassion, oh God. Father God, today I pray that you strengthen each and every one of them. Father God, I pray, oh God, that you fill them, oh God, with your grace. Let your grace sustain them. Let your grace, oh God, be bestowed upon every heart and strengthen every heart and strengthen every mind and strengthen every soul. Father God, today we pray, oh God, that you will experience, oh God, the depths of your love, the same God that my can serve. My God, you will bring them into that knowledge. You will bring them into that personal relationship. My God, even in this of my very service today, Father God, we pray, my God, that you will touch their heart, that they will open unto you, my God, so that they can accept you as their Lord and as their Savior, my God, so that they can come into that relationship, into that oneness, of God, with you, my oh God, that legacy, that nothing left behind, how we serve you, my God, let this legacy, of God, my God, continue in his family, in his siblings' life, oh God, in his brothers, in his sisters, in the niece and the nephews of God, my God, we pray today, my God, that the chain and the yokes that the enemy has placed over the night be broken, and we pray, Father God, that you will comfort them, that you will conceal the Lord, oh God, we take the mercy, we compassion, my God, when there is unforgiveness, you will heal their heart, until they come into a place where they can forgive and release of God every hurt and every pain. My God, we thank you and we honor you for doing it. My God, strengthen his mom and strengthen his dad. Oh God, strengthen the hands and strengthen, my God, his brothers and the sisters of God. My God, knowing that they have lost a friend that they will not be able to speak to anymore. But Father God, let the memory of nothing remain. Let the memory of nothing remain with them, oh God, so that they will remember the good time, the laughter, the joy, God, that they share with them. Oh my God, so that this can bring comfort and joy and peace in their heart and in their mind. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for doing it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we ask of this grace. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you, family. God bless you.
show me something come up to pot. Those who pray, those who cover in the family. Specific mention to Pastor Simona. Mr. Mrs. Martin. Mr. Mrs. Freeman. The aunties. The cousins who came all the way from New York. Pastor Moses and Clara Dennis. His friends, his siblings. I'm saying a big thank you for showing your love to the family and the support. Thank you, everyone.
Blessed be the name of the living God. Glory be to the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the family members would like for you to gather behind the, behind the casket. The leaders, the church leaders as well. 